I don't like cancel culture. But James Comey and Andrew McCabe and Peter Strzok and Lisa Page need to be canceled. <laughs> that I don't want to send them to jail, but I think they need to be canceled. I think they need to be kind of like, you know, banished from polite society. Let's it's, talk about sure. the FBI and how we go about that and then how we deal with this larger question of things of like how do, how do we rebuild trust and confidence, not just in the FBI, but in the political process or in our culture. And just as uh, to tee that off the uh, uh, the listener or the, the viewer, Colin, uh, for five dollars, which you can do at YouTube, you can pay Thanks, money Colin. and we'll always read your question. But he writes, we know the FBI is corrupt and DOJ is controlled by Biden. Why do we expect anything to change? Congress won't gut the entire federal government. Uh, Eli, can you or, or uh, can we look at what Durham you had mentioned this before? <clears throat> Durham does not come up with um a um a series of reforms uh zach do we have some language about what durham you know what yeah. he does kind of suggest yes in terms uh, of reform for the uh he ultimately suggests uh appointing a um career position for a nonpartisan fbi agent or lawyer to challenge FISA applications and every other stage of any investigation where it's a politically sensitive investigation. So that, that's the one recommendation that he makes. We also have uh, you know, an appetite among Republicans. This is uh, mm -hmm. Re Representative Andy Biggs of Arizona, who's on the House Judiciary Committee saying, defund and dismantle the FBI, which um, honestly, I'm open-minded to uh, no. just a, a wholesale, like, do, do we need to, is this agency even working at all anymore? But I'm curious what you think yeah. of- And we'll also point out that Vivek Ramaswamy, who we interviewed a couple of weeks ago, was saying that. He said that, you know, the FBI should just be dismantled because it is too far gone and rebuilt from the ground up, what that means. But yeah, Eli, what, what should happen specifically to the FBI in order to make it less prone to this kind of behavior uh, and other types of system, uh, or recurring mistakes, it seems? Well, the first thing is I think you should separate the domestic intelligence function from the FBI mm -hmm. from the law enforcement function. So mm -hmm. I would take out all of the intelligence stuff that what that's in the fbi it's a big part of the fbi it's like hoover built all that stuff in the 20th century to, against the communist party and the soviets mm -hmm. it should go to something else um maybe a new agency um but it should not be in under the same roof as the cops cops and spies should not coexist because mm -hmm. spies break laws and rules and cops enforce them so as a very basic point we do yeah. not want the same people who are responsible for sort of uh, countering intelligence threats or uh, spying on potential terrorist cells in the same building as the people who are just there to, you know, catch fraudsters and stuff like that. And well, how did 9-11, how did the response to 9-11, including, you know, the Patriot Act, but not limited to that, how did that, um, you know, did that uh, steroid up uh, Jagger Hoover's initial conception of the intelligence gathering, uh, you know, and infiltration aspects of the FBI or, you know, are, Absolutely. are we worse no, no. off after that's a great, It's a great point. Um, so in in a piece I wrote a few months back for Commentary Magazine, um, you know, can, can, can the X, there it is, can the FBI be saved from itself and can we be saved from the FBI? Um, I get into the fact that I think it's been missing is that right before 9-11, the FBI uh came very close to kind of having the sorts of huge reforms that it so desperately needs, but it got out of that because um, Louis Free, who was the director, um, resigned in shame after uh, Robert Hansen was caught, who went undetected for 20 years as a originally a Soviet agent and then a Russian agent. Um, and they sort of Went after it's the wrong nice guy. to see somebody who made a smooth transition from the Soviet to the Russian side of things. It's only <laughs> right. It's only sad that he was an American FBI agent, but right. Um, so that was a huge blow. But there were several other things. The Wenho Lee case was completely botched. Mm -hmm. They ended up. Having Could you to... briefly describe what the Wenho Lee case? Because that was something that was everywhere for a while, and then it disappeared. And it is a disturbing you know, in, uh, you know, personification of when the FBI gets something really wrong. 
Yeah, sure. I mean, this is a guy who worked for one of the top secret DOE uh, nuclear labs, and he was accused of being a spy for the Chinese, and the FBI was absolutely convinced of that. Mm. There were a number of, you know, there were a number of cases, you know, stories that were written, I think, in, in, in major elite publications like the New York Times, accusing him of such. And then it ended up that they were totally wrong. And he sued the FBI and won because uh, they defamed him. And mm. even though I think they eventually charged him with something far less than being oh, it was like taking a uh yeah a, a class or a secured computer home or something like yeah, that. yeah but it was like it was day. far yeah. less it than whatever nothing. yeah right but then that's then there's like you know the screw up uh at waco i mean there's all kinds of yep. things that happened in the 1990s that really were very bad for the fbi and it's traditional friends on the capitol hill mm -hmm. um usually republicans like the fbi so chuck grassley at the time you know kind of gives a speech about it was only in his 80s so it, yeah. he was you know oddly <laughs> a, a young spry yeah. you know spring yeah. chicken um was uh you know i mean like saying hey my daddy loved the fbi but i at this point yeah. don't think i can trust them and that was in 19 that was in 20 that was in like 2000 you know or 2001 right. when he said that and it's only kind of gotten worse so what happened is so freeze gone and then Bob Mueller comes in to be the FBI director. So once you have a new guy, you're not going to blame him for everything else. And then the FBI is kind of blamed for not putting connecting the dots on 9-11. Mm -hmm. Again, though, that's that's Louis Free's fault. That's not Bob yeah. Mueller's fault. He, he was only there like a week or two before 9-11 is his first day. Um, and so the problem, what they said was that there were too many restrictions. And this is very important. That FB, to, 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 the, to the FISA, the, the, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, um, and that's the system that the FBI uses to try to get the court to issue a warrant to spy on American citizens. And so they needed to remove those restrictions and knock down this wall between collecting intelligence and doing the law enforcement work, and which is what they, they thought that was the problem. Um, what's rarely mentioned is that before 9-11, there were these FISA scandals, which you know, produced all this outrage. The FISA court rebuked members of the F, you know, for basically the same kind of thing that we saw with Carter Page. It's FBI agents just totally making false BS statements to the court. They were ignoring this time limits on various surveillance warrants. So they were continuing to listen to lines when they shouldn't have. Or even in some cases, they were continuing to collect information on phones after the number had gone to somebody else. I mean, all kinds of things like this that were, violations of like what they were supposed to do and violations of the of of the court oversight it looked really bad for a while it was the reason why we have something that's called the woods procedure which is that now allegedly for every fisa warrant that you submit to the court you have to have a separate file at fbi that shows why every fact in that application documented is accurate so you have to have it's a, a sort of a another one of these safeguards, another one of these reforms. But what did right. we learn from Horowitz? What we learned from Horowitz is that the FBI ignores the Woods procedures all the time. Mm -hmm. And that gets back to the main point of Doran, which is that if you have an institution that's filled with people who, who, aren't, who don't have integrity, then you can have all the reforms you want. It's not going to make a difference. So there has to be something that is also, in addition to, I think, removing the intelligence collection from mm -hmm. the Bureau, which is a no-brainer. I mean, this is going to sound strange because normally I don't like the idea. I'm I'm like Reason Magazine and many others, and I'm very where I don't like cancel culture. But James Comey and Andrew McCabe and Peter Strzok and Lisa Page need to be canceled. <laughs> that I don't want to send them to jail, but I think they need to be canceled. I think they need to be kind of like you know banished from polite society. They should not be asked to you know appear on prestigious think tank panels or to teach at universities or to appear as law enforcement analysts on CNN. Yeah. And something like that would show that there are at least some sort of social consequences for FBI leaders who have fallen so far of the mark and have been, have, have been so have, have lacked so much integrity. And then maybe we have a chance at sort of trying to change what appears to be a really I'm worried about the culture of the FBI at this point yeah. because it's not limited to just, I mean, listen, this is an egregious case, but we see it time and again um, that oftentimes these G men kind of think they're the law unto themselves and yeah. we can't have that. So right. I, I'd like to see some, some social consequences for some of these folks.
That was an excerpt from Reason's live stream with Eli Lake dissecting the Durham report. If you want to watch the whole conversation, go here. If you want to watch another excerpt, go here. And tune in next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time because Zach Weismuller and I here will be back here with a great guest. Thanks for watching.